Father, we do come to bless your name today. We honor you and we thank you for who you are, God, because we recognize there's none like you. No one else can love a heart like you do, God. So we thank you for this awesome atmosphere. This wonderful, wonderful manifestation of your presence. Now, Lord, speak to us at the point and the place of our need, God. We need to hear from you today. Pray, God, that you would give us information for our heads and inspiration for our hearts, but most of all, implementation for our hands and for our feet. Anoint me by your spirit, Lord, at this strategic hour to preach your holy word with supernatural power in Jesus' name. Say hallelujah. And amen. We praise God for you and for your presence here uh, tonight. There is a word from the Lord in the book of James. In James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. of James chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, James chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brother and count it all joy fall into divers temptations. They also mean trials or trouble. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 2 says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Count it all joy. I have uh, two nieces, um, little sisters, um, and Brianna and Aubrey. Brianna is older. Uh, when she was about eight or nine, her younger sister Aubrey was about four, three or four. And I was visiting with them, and I gave them each a $20 bill. And um, Brianna, who's older, was very happy. Aubrey, who was about four, she was looking sad. And I said to her older sister, I said, well, what's wrong? And she said, she doesn't like, she likes single dollars. <laughs> so I gave her, I took the 20 back, and I gave her three $1 bills. She starts jumping up and down. She starts running around the house. She starts smiling and laughing. And in my mind, I'm trying to think of why is she happy when I took a $20 bill and gave her three singles until it dawned on me that she didn't know how to count. When you don't know how to count, you don't respond to things the right way. And so James, who's the pastor, first pastor of the church, writing to a group of believers who have been scattered, who 
been persecuted, who has been hurt. And his word to them is, I'm not praying that God deliver you from your trouble. I'm not praying that God rescue you from your trial or your test. But my prayer and my direction to you is that you learn how to count it, to consider it, learn how to deal with it. Uh, who, is, who is James? Sister McLaughlin, James is the half-brother, biological brother of Jesus. This is the same James that grew up in the house with Jesus. According to Matthew 13, verse 55, Jesus had other brother, had brothers and sisters. And so, uh, yes, Mary, his mother, was a virgin when she had Jesus, but then she and Joseph had other children later. So Matthew 13, 55 says he had some brothers and some sisters. But John chapter 7 lets us know around verse 5 that they did not believe that Jesus, their brother, was the Messiah. They heard, they saw his miracles, they heard his sermons, Beverly, but they did not believe in Jesus until, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, around verse 7, around verse 5 or 7, after the resurrection, when Jesus appeared to several persons, one of which was this James, then he believed. It was only after Jesus had gone through the crucifixion, the beating, the horror of the crucifixion, and God raised him out of it, and he was able to then appear to James, then he believed. Because for some, some people, y'all, all of your testimony, all of your praying, that won't change them. But when you've been through a hard time and you've got the scars to prove it, and you can tell them, I've been through some persecution, but God has brought me out, that's what helps people to believe. Sometimes people won't believe uh, uh, just your, your praying or your, or your inviting, but when you go through something, that's why you ought to not be ashamed of your testimony. That's why you shouldn't be ashamed of what you went through because when people know what you've been through and they know you've been through hell and high water, but God brought you through, and you're able to say, yes, yes, the devil thought he had me. The devil thought he destroyed me, but I'm still here, and I'm here by the grace of God. Then you have a testimony, and you are believable. So let me, let me, let me hurry up. He says, he says count, it all, count it all joy. Uh, you you got you to gotta recognize the reality of life's trouble. You got to recognize the reality of, of life's troubles. He says, uh, he says, when you fall into divers temptations, when you, when you fall, not if you fall, but when you fall. I know this is a word for everybody in here. I didn't even have to worry about that. When God gave me this word, I wasn't worried about will it, will it, will it reach somebody? Because everybody in here, you're in one of three places. You're either in trouble. You just got out of trouble. Oh, you're on your way into trouble. Come on, come on here. Can I get a witness right there? That we all in one of those three places. Come on here. Come on here. Whatever, whatever situation, wherever you are now, you either in it, you just got out of it, or guess what? If you ain't in it and you ain't got out of it, keep on living, like my grandmother used to say, because baby, trouble will find you. Y'all, trouble knows your address. Trouble knows your email address. Trouble knows how to text you. Trouble even knows how to reach you on Instagram. You can be minding your own business and trouble can come and find you. You Trouble comes definitely this is when you fall into diverse temptations Parismas, uh, 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 where we get the word pirate from it, it means that, that, that trouble comes uh, unexpectedly 
Yeah, yeah. It, it means I'm not expecting it. It's like a pirate that when pirates overtake a, to overtake a ship, it's unexpected. He says that's what trouble does. Trouble comes in a, it's, it's a def, it definitely comes, but it comes in an indefinite time. It comes when you're not expecting it. It's just trouble when you fall into it. In Nashville, when I went to college at Fisk University, they have, uh, uh, they have ice storms from time to time. And sometimes uh, they, there's sheet ice. And sheet ice, you can't really see it. And one day I was walking to class, and I didn't see the sheet ice. And I slipped and slid halfway down the campus <laughs> because it was unexpected. He says, that's how trouble comes. Everything's going well, and all of a sudden you get a phone call. You ever been there? Am I in here by myself? Everything's going well. You get a text message. Charisma, it means that it comes unexpectedly. And then, and then it not only is it definite, it's diverse. Notice what it says. It says when you fall into diverse temptations, which means it's personalized and it's synchronized. It's personalized, Dre, because, because y'all, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a trial. There's a test that's tailor-made for you. See, there are some things that you see other people go through, and you'll be like, that's not that bad. But be careful how you respond when other people are going through their trouble. Because what they're going through may not hit you, but there's something that can hit your life that can mess you up. So that's why we're not supposed to see through one another. We're supposed to see one another through. Huh? huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, 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 because it may be you today, but it may be me tomorrow. So instead of looking down on somebody else, you need to be praying for them, saying, Lord, help them, help them, because but by the grace of God, Amen. there go you. So Julius, he says, he says, you got to recognize the reality of life's troubles. Mm-hmm. But, um, but pastor, that's, you know, that's, that's obvious. I, I know that. Uh, that's the bad news. But I can't really, I couldn't give you the good news till I gave you the bad news. Because good news ain't really good news unless it's against the backdrop of some bad news. And so the bad news is that there's a reality that trouble comes. But the, but, but the good news is that you need to reaffirm your response to life's trouble. Uh, he says, when trouble comes, count it all joy. Now, now let me tell you, Tony, what that doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that trouble is joy. It doesn't mean when I got that call from the doctor that that was joy. It doesn't mean when my loved one passed that that was joy. It doesn't mean that everything that happens, even though it's bad, I say it's joy. No, it's not joy. Listen, he says, count it as joy. Uh, he He says, count it as joy. It's not joy. I'm not acting like it's joy. I'm not in some la-la land. No, it, it hurt. Uh, oh, you lost your job. That, that hurts. When friends betray you, that, that hurts. When, when you got more month than you got money, that, that hurts. It's not joy. But he says, count it like joy. It means, it means watch this, it means to, to command it as joy. And joy there means an, an inner sense of well-being that says in spite of what it looks like now I know that God is going to work it out that that that's why it's joy and watch this he says he says to to command it as joy that that word means to command it means that in spite of what's going on I tell joy get up and get out to bed joy put your clothes on get in the car with me Joy, ride with me to work. 
Joy, when I go into the office, you need to come in here with me. And even though everything around me is looking bad, I command Joy to be with me. In other words, I'm not going to let what's going on around me affect my disposition. I'm not going to let what's going on around me affect what's going on. I'm going to command Joy to come with me. And what's interesting is that Joy and trial is in the same verse. Interesting that you have those two types of things so close together, which means joy is not based on my condition. Oh, I wish you'd wake up and hear what I'm trying to say to you today. See, 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 here, here's, here's maybe why you're confused, because you're confusing joy with happiness. And see, happiness is based on what's happening. And if things are not happening the way I want them to happen, then I am not happy. Please don't make me say that again. But see, joy says, I don't care what's going on, I can still have joy. Joy says that I've got problems, I've got issues, things are not going all the way I want them to have, but I still, does anybody know what I'm, does anybody know that in spite of what's going on around me, you can still have a sense of well-being, you can still have the joy of the Lord? He says, count it all joy. Count it, count it, count it all joy. It could say count it pure joy. Count it unmixed joy. Count it joy, but don't mix it with anything. Pure joy. When I was a child, uh, we, we, we were, let me just say, we were economically challenged. And there were, t and, I, and I loved french fries. And I loved to put ketchup on my french fries. But there were times when the ketchup was just in the little corner. And mom didn't have enough money to buy another bottle of ketchup. So what she would do is she would put some, oh, y'all was like that too? Oh, wait, was that, y'all know what I'm talking about? Was y'all like that too? You, you put some water and you, oh, y'all know, oh, y'all was like my mom, y'all understand, y'all shake it up. Oh, somebody, somebody was in my house, you know what I'm talking about? You take water and shake it up and so you got some, some ketchup. It's ketchup, but it's not it's not pure ketchup. That, that's what I'm talking. He says, he says, he says, count it pure joy. Because here it is, some of us got joy, but it's mixed with complaining and, and griping and, and having an attitude and a bad disposition. And he says, no, the joy God wants you to have is pure joy. He says, he says, count it. Averill, this is a an accounting term. He says, calculate it as joy. He says, he says, write it in the ledger as joy. He says, what you do is when you go through your problem, I'm getting you ready for 2020. And here's why. Because I know we're excited now, but guess what? Trouble is coming in 2020. And when trouble comes, he's telling you how you ought to write it in the ledger. Write it in every trial, every trouble, every issue that hits you in 2020. Write it in as joy. Have a, have a policy. I got, I got different policies. There's life and there are different policies. Life insurance policy. You got disability. You got health insurance. You got car insurance. You got fire insurance. And you get a policy before you have the tragedy. You don't wait for the tragedy to get the policy. You got a policy before the tragedy. You with me? Now, he's saying that you need to have a trouble policy. That every time trouble comes in your life, the policy is to count it as joy. In other words, decide tonight that whatever happens to me in 2020, my policy, my principle, my predetermined disposition is I'm going to have some joy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
My dear friend, Dr. Wilma Johnson, who passed away about four years ago. She passed at the New Prospect Church in Detroit, Michigan. She passed away from lung cancer. And she battled with it for about 10 years. And when she first went to the doctor and she was diagnosed with it, um, a couple weeks later, I called her. And I said, how are things going? And she said that when she went with her husband to the doctor, they told her she had lung cancer. She left out and she said, God is in control. And God's got me. I trust in him. Now, y'all, she didn't decide that the day she got the news. She had a policy long before the trouble came. And all I'm saying to you is you need to have a trouble policy. You need to have a predetermined principle that when trouble comes in your life, that you can count that as joy. Now, now, now you, need to, you need to recognize the reality of trouble. You need to reaffirm your response to trouble, but then you need to reestablish the rationale for trouble. Here's what he says. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith. See, see, the problem is, for many of us, is we don't understand that God has to take you through some tests. Because it's only when your faith has been turned inside out do, can you really tell if all that jumping and shouting is really real. <laughs> or are you just going through the motions? And see, your faith has to be tested. And maybe what God is doing in somebody's life right now is he's testing your faith. Now, 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 now here it is. God will test you. He tested Abraham. Told Abraham to take his son Isaac to the mountain. He tested Moses with the Red Sea. He tested Daniel in the lion's den. He tested Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. God will test you. And God has a way of testing your faith with trials, troubles, and some difficulties. But now some of us are scared of tests because we think, you know, it takes us back to our school days when you had a test, you got some anxiety because you were afraid of tests. But you got to understand that the test that God gives you is not to show you how much you don't know. It's to show you how much you do know. That when you go through the test, God says there's so much inside of you that you have so much word in you, you have so much strength in you that the only way I can show it to you is that you got to go through some tests. But baby, when the test is over, when the test is over, you will, you will be able to see that God has some greatness inside of you. He says, the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. He says that when it's all over, God is really trying to put something in you. He's trying to get you to the, to the point where you can go through some trouble and it not bother you. See, see the same thing that there's some stuff that used to bother me years ago that doesn't even shake me now. How is that? Because I've been through something. And y'all, when you go through something... It doesn't mean that, 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 that problems don't come, but it means I deal with it differently because I've seen in the rearview mirror of my life that every time I've been in a bind, every time I didn't think I could make it, every time it looked like I was about to go down, God stepped in right in the nick of time. Is there anybody in here that can look in the rearview mirror of your life and say it's not that I haven't had trouble and pain, but every time I thought it was over, God stepped in and made a way out of no way. And that's why I've got to give him praise. That's why you can praise him through your pain. That's why you can shout through your tears because you can look back over your life and say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I wouldn't make. But now I understand the trouble that I went through. It was only to get me closer to him. And that's why Andre Crouch said, I thank God for my mountains. 
I thank God for my valleys. I thank God for the storms he brought me through. Because if I didn't have a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve it. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Is there anybody here that can look over their life and say, I've learned to trust in Jesus? Is there anybody here that can look over their problems and say, I never would have made it, but now I see you were there for me. And I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better because of what I've been through. And so when trouble comes in my life, I don't get upset. But what I say is greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Is there anybody here that can look over your life? When I look over my life and I see where I've come from, I've got to give God praise. He's brought you through trouble. He's brought you through trials. He's brought you through sickness. He's brought you through heartache, and you're still here. Oh, that's it. Touch three people and tell them I'm still here. I got to give him a still here praise. I'm still here. If the devil had his way, he would have killed you long time ago. But God had another plan. God brought you out. Is there anybody here that can testify that the Lord brought you through trials? The Lord brought you through pain? The Lord brought you through heartache? And now you got to give him the praise? Yeah! Now, now here it is. Here it is. Here it is. 2019, devil has attacked you with some of his best stuff. It's as if you were a target. And the devil said, I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to destroy her. But you're here. Now, now you gotta, you gotta pray for me, because, because, I, I like to, I like to show off a little bit. Just pray for me, pray for me. And I know the devil threw some stuff at me. Back in January, my, my dear cousin, close cousin, uh, she passed away unexpectedly. Forty-four years old. That's how my year began. Trouble and pain all through the year. Y'all, I still got to praise. And if you don't mind, I, if, can anybody identify? It's been a rough year for somebody. Has it been a rough year? Rough, rough year? You're some of your testify, Lenore. Look here, look here. But see, you're still here. And, it, and what's, what the devil wants you to do is he wants you to be depressed. He wants you to be mad. He wants you to be angry. He wants you to be bitter. But I, I want to make the devil mad a little bit. And you know how you make him mad? He expects you to sit there with your arms closed. But if you just praise him just, just a little bit, if you just, just give, come on, I just want to make him mad. I want to I wanna upset the devil on the last. Does anybody want to upset? Does anybody want to just make him? He took all that from you, and he don't expect you to have no prayer. But is anybody here to say, devil, you took your best shot, and I'm still got me a prayer. That's it, make him mad, that's it, make him mad, that's it, get him mad, make him mad, make him mad. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness and how he's set me free, I can... Hey! 
when I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness, how he died in Calvary, I... He's not expecting you to do this. Hey! Oh, wait a minute. Say, we're going to really make him mad now. We're going to tell him God gets the glory through what I've been through. God gets the glory. To God? To God be the glory. Yeah, everything that happened in 2019, God gets the glory. Every bad thing, every bad thing, every sick, every heartache, God gets the glory. For the thing. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. 